Hello, I want to thank you for watching this webinar. It is an exceptionally important webinar for each and every one of you if you are inspiring to become a successful trader. If you are going through different courses till now and trying to figure out what the market is going to do, what is going to be the direction of the market and how you should trade, believe me, you do not know the rule that I'm about to talk to you about. This is the most important rule in trading and it is going to change your life. So please listen. I'm going to talk to you about the rule of the institutional traders. I have learned it myself from being exposed to traders, professional traders and institutional traders, went through the rules and finally found out the way that they trade and specifically this one very important rule which I am about to discuss. So when we're talking about trading, when we're talking about the direction of the market, you always need to understand that the direction of the market is dictated by the institutional traders. Now, why is that? Because 80% of the volume in the market comes from institutional traders. They move the market, not you, not I, not the investors who are buying and holding. We are all together 20% of the volume in the market. Now, if you do want to understand where the stock that you're buying is about to move, whether it's going to move up or going to move down, you need to understand the systems in which, according, the institutional traders are bound to work with. Now, what do I mean bound to work with? You need to understand that a person, a trader who works for, let's say, Goldman Sachs, he does not create the rules himself. He's sitting in a morning meeting at 8.30, one hour before the market is open, and he's being told by his boss, you need to buy this, you need to sell that. And normally they're buying or selling very large quantities. Not like you and I may buy or sell 200 shares, 400 shares, 1,000 shares. They are trading very large quantities, and therefore they need to obey to very specific rules. And when a trader like that just, you know, starts working, he signs a book. There's rules in the book and he must follow the rules. And therefore, whatever he does is dictated by the rules of the firm in which he works. Now, some rules are very specific. Some rules are wide open to everyone in the industry. Now, I'm going to talk to you today as I mentioned earlier, about very specific rule, one very specific rule, which has to do with the S&P 500 and has to do with the direction of the stock that you will be trading. In fact, I'm going to suggest that this rule is going to make you understand the direction of the stock that you are about to trade before it makes the move. So I'm going to give you some sort of a crystal ball that will show you how you're about to trade and what you are supposed to be doing based on a very, very simple and specific rule. And this rule has to do with the S&P 500 and the direction of the S&P 500. Now let's try and understand how the institutional traders are moving the market. At first, they need a customer. They're going to buy or to sell a large quantity of shares. So who's the customer? The customer could be a huge fund, a big fund or a small fund. These funds usually manage billions of dollars of maybe employees of some big company, whatever. Now, this fund just decided they want to buy a share, something, doesn't matter, let's say Apple. And their advisors just advise them that they should buy Apple because they believe that it's going to go sky high, whatever reason. Now, they just decided they want to buy some, but you know, you and I, we may be buying 100 shares or 1,000 shares or 10,000 shares, but a big fund who needs to move uh, billions of dollars is not going to buy less than half a million, one million or two million shares. Now, they don't do it themselves. It's impossible. If they will try and buy the stocks themselves, like a large quantity, one million shares, they're probably going to drive the price high and they don't want to buy at a high price. So they would go to one of the big players, like let's say Goldman Sachs, and they will ask them to buy, let's say, one million shares. Now, how's, how does the deal go like? Goldman's going to buy the shares. Normally, the ongoing rate is around three cents per share. And you need to know that. And if Goldman's going to buy the, the, the shares at a very good price, which needs to be determined, and we're going to start talking about it right now, then 
they're probably going to get a bonus. Now, the bonus may go up to another 10 cents or so. So in total, they could make up to 13 cents. Now, the trader who buys the shares, the 1 million shares, not going to finish buying them all today. It's, it's a job that's going to take him a week, two weeks, three weeks, depending on the uh, volatility of the market, depending on the volume of the stock that he's about to trade. And anyway, he wants to buy it at a great price because that's the way where Goldman's going to make an extra commission and the trader himself is going to make his own commission at the end of the month in his salary. So the trader is looking to buy the shares at a great price. Now there's very, there's a lot of rules that has to do with how low does he really buy the shares. Now intraday there's several rules like VWAP for example which you need to know about I'm not going to discuss it today it's called volume weight average price and it is a very important rule for institutional traders but I'm going to talk today about the S&P 500 which is rule number one the most important rule and the rule that you need to know in order to survive in trading and not only to survive but to succeed and as I mentioned earlier to have this amazing crystal ball that's going to show you where the stock that you are about to buy or maybe short if you want to make money from the fact that it may come down sometime you need to know this rule which I'm about to explain so let's take a look at the S&P 500 I'm going to show you the S&P 500 as it was traded today and we'll try to understand how does the S&P moves and what is the stock that you are about to trade is going to do in relation with the S&P 500. So let's take a look at my charts right now. Now here we can see the S&P 500. This is in fact the SPY, the ETF of the S&P, which is the exchange traded fund. But again, it represents the 500 biggest stocks in the market. Now, why are we watching? the S&P 500. We are watching the S&P 500 because again it's the most important tool of the institutional traders. Now here's the rule. If an institutional trader wants to buy a stock, now let's go back to the fund that instructed the institutional trader to buy 1 million shares of Apple, then he needs to watch the S&P 500 at all time. He's only allowed to buy Apple stocks only when the S&P 500 is in green, meaning the S&P is moving up. Only then is the trader allowed to click the button and buy Apple shares. Now, as long as the S&P is not moving higher, he's not allowed to do so. Now, always remember, 80% of the volume in Apple is going to be originated by, S by institutional traders who are buyers and institutional traders who are sellers. There's not just buyers. Let's say sometimes there's could be 50% buyers and 50% sellers. So if you're watching the S&P 500 right now and you're watching it coming down or up, it's based on how many buyers and how many sellers are at the same time. Now, notice the relationship between the S&P 500 and Apple. You can see that Apple is in fact following the S&P 500. Now, take a look at all of these points that I'm about to show you. Look at point number one. You can see how Apple moved in relationship with the S&P 500. Now take a look at point number two and point number three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine, ten. Now what are we seeing here? Apple is relatively weak. The S&P was moving in between green and red. Apple started in red and at that point is still in red and then try to move higher but as you can see everything that Apple did today has to do with the direction of the S&P 500. Now who's moving who? Is the S&P 500 moving Apple or is it Apple that is moving the S&P 500? Apple is a big company it is an important part of the S&P 500 but you need to remember there are 500 companies within the S&P 500. So it's not the tail that is moving the dog, it's the dog that is moving the tail. So everything you're seeing here in Apple is something that was originated by the S&P 500. Now my claim is, and I'm about to prove it to you, that the S&P 500 was the one who made the first big move and then came Apple, which means 
the S&P was showing the way in which Apple is about to move. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it is your crystal ball. Now, so just imagine this. If I'm going to teach you a way, and I'm going to do it right now, and I'm going to show you that in life right now, if I'm going to teach you the way to anticipate the move of Apple, whether you go long, you buy it when the stock is moving higher, based on what you expect to happen soon, because the S&P made the first move, or maybe later you could short it based on the move of the S&P, again, if the S&P is coming down. Now, just imagine this. I'm going to give you a tool here that will, as I mentioned earlier, change your life starting today. What I do expect you to do as a homework after this session is over is watch the S&P 500 with different companies, with different shares, not just Apple. It's not, it's not just going to affect Apple. It, it, it will affect every stock that is over $10 and 1 million shares of volume a day, which means around 4,000 different stocks in the market. They're all going to move according to the S&P and you will get some kind of a pre-warning that something in the stock that you are about to trade is going to happen. Again, this is your crystal ball. Now take a look at what happens during the trading session, what happened today and how I traded it. And again, you could do exactly like I do. But now we're seeing the intraday. We're looking at what happened during the trading session. And what you can notice here is that the S&P 500 is coming down and Apple is coming down and no surprise right here. We saw that earlier, we saw the result. We also saw that Apple is going to go with the market the whole day. The first move, as you can see right here, is the S&P 500. Look at the S&P 500, how it breaks up right now. Now, there is a delay. Apple is going to make the move after the S&P 500 and it starts moving up right now. That's why I am buying Apple. I'm long Apple and the reason I am long Apple is because I knew it will move with the S&P 500. I knew that the first move is going to be made by the S&P 500 and look now how Apple is joining the S&P 500. Now it's a fast forward of what happened but you can see it all happened first in the S&P 500 then the institutional traders who are the buyers in Apple today who are supposed to be buying large quantity and who are trying to get the average price as low as possible because that's how they're going to get their extra commission are starting to buy Apple. So they were kind of surprised by the S&P jumping up like it did and then they would start buying Apple and now Apple is bound to follow the S&P 500. The S&P was my crystal ball. Now look, this is a profitable trade. I just made some money selling at the point where I thought I should sell. And at that point, the S&P already made the move and Apple just made the difference, came up with S&P at a certain delay. Now this delay could be a few seconds, still plenty of time for you to buy after the S&P made the move. It could be a few minutes and sometimes it's just a little bit too close in together. Like if the S&P is going to make a slow upside move, then sometimes you will just not get the opportunity to buy Apple. Now, it's not just about buying the stock. It's also about finding some kind of a technical formation. But I'm not going to get into this explanation right now. What is more important for me is that you will understand right now that what you should do at all times is watch the S&P 500 and anticipate the move of the stock that you are about to trade, like, just like I did right now in Apple. So I just made a few thousand dollars trading Apple with the direction of the S&P 500. You can do the same. Now let's see another example. That was my second trade in Apple today. Now at this point you can see that the S&P all of a sudden is about to break down. It's about to happen. Now just imagine what will happen to Apple. So I'm looking at the S&P 500 and I'm seeing the S&P 500 holding at the highs and at some point crashing down. Now it's not a big crash, it's just an unpleasant downside move. But again, just imagine what Apple is about to do. We've seen it earlier, We've, you know that it moved with the market. Now take a look at Apple and I'm shorting Apple at this point. Now why am I shorting Apple? Because I'm expecting Apple to continue and follow the market. The market, as we call it, is the S&P 500. Whenever I say the market, I mean the S&P 500. So 
The S&P 500 moves slower. Apple is following the S&P 500. Here's my second successful trade. So now again, not every move of the S&P 500, you're supposed to go long or short Apple. You need to take a look at very specific technical formation, have a little bit more experience. And I just want you to understand this is not as simple as it may seem. It may sound to you like, wow, okay, so I just got the idea that the S&P is going to make the first move, Apple is going to make the move afterwards. Yes, it will, but it's, it does not end here. You need to gain a lot of experience. You need to understand the direction of the market. And I'm going to give you homework soon. So just to make sure that you do that and you do that successfully whenever you come across a stock that you want to trade based on the direction of the S&P 500. Now let's move to your homework. Your homework are extremely important. I want you to go through a boot camp. It's not easy. It's hard. I want you to sit at home and do not trade. I want you to have the S&P 500 in the middle. Just watch the chart of the S&P 500 and put up another two or three charts of stocks that you would like normally like to trade. Could be Apple, could be other stocks. And follow the intraday move of the S&P 500 and try to imagine what's the stock that you could have traded. Don't trade it or maybe demo trade it. Try to imagine what the stock is about to do. Now, I promised you this. If you're going to sit down doing this for three long days, because it is hard work, it is a boot camp, and you do that for hours every day, just watch the relationship between the S&P and the stock that you could have traded. By the end of the three or four days, you will have the exact idea where you should move in and move out based on the ideas that you accumulated during the trading session. And again, don't trade it. Just try and have the idea of what is the relationship between the S&P 500 and the stock. And did you have enough time to move in long? Or did you have enough time to move in short? And exactly what, what were the relationship? Does it work all day? Does it only work in certain technical formations? The answer you will find. The homework is all yours. I did my job here explaining you what the S&P is all about. And again, I, would, I will re repeat that one more time. Please remember, this is the most important tool as a trader. You could move in and out. The institutional trader cannot do that. They must keep buying as the S&P is moving higher. They cannot sell in the same day large quantities that will drive the stock price down. You can move in and out. You can piggyback them and then make your decision, move in and out whenever you like. That's your advantage as a trader. That's how you should trade based on the S&P 500. Now, as long as the S&P 500 is the most important tool of the institutional trader, which dictates one of their most important tools, and it's not the only rule, you need to learn more. But as long as you understand that, your chance to succeed are much, much higher. Now, let's try and understand what I just said. If you follow the trend, let's say you, watch, you just watch Apple and you want to decide whether you go long or you go short. You could buy or you could sell Apple at different points during the day. Let's just say you do not watch the S&P 500. What is your advantage? You have an advantage. You look at technical entries, technical exits. You look at uh, the volume changes. You look at the buyers and the sellers. If you are a trader, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, you need to go through basic education, probably. But if you're a trader, you do have an advantage. You follow the trend of the stock that you're buying. You may be going short when the stock is coming down or long when the stock is moving higher. You do have an advantage. So let's just say that your advantage brings you to a success rate of 55%, maybe 60%. So you will end up winning 60% of the trades, losing 40% you will be making money. Now, just imagine this. If you add to your already existing abilities as a stock trader, watching the trend, watching the volume, watching other things, if you just add to that the direction of the S&P 500, now just imagine the huge difference. You all, the, all of a sudden, you're jumping between 55% success rate to maybe 65, from 60 to 70%, your success rate becomes much, much higher just because 
you went with the direction of the S&P 500. It's not just the direction of the stock that you're training. You need to take into consideration the direction of the institutional traders. And they are the ones who are moving the stock that you're buying. So if you integrate everything together, all the ingredients, the technical analysis, the direction of the stock, the trend and everything, you come to the point where your advantage is greater than what you used to have until now. And that's the secret of trading. Now, please remember, this is not the only role that you need to learn. There are several roles that you need to take. One of them is VWAP, Volume Weight Average Price. And there's more and more and more. Now, what should you do next? Well, first go through the homework. And then, if you're seriously thinking of becoming traders, well, I do offer you to join probably the best program in the market today. And this is my trading challenge. This challenge comes with all the education you need in order to become a trader. It comes with several courses, which all has to do with just one important thing, giving you all the knowledge you need in order to become a trader. Several amazing classes that will show you the way to trade correctly and going to touch several other rules which institutional traders are using and how can you implement them and do it each and every day. Now, please remember, learning trading isn't as easy as it may sound. It is a very hard occupation. It takes time, sometimes years to learn this professional, but you do need to start somehow. And I think that my trading challenge is in fact the best way to do it. Now, why do, I, why do I call it a challenge? Because it doesn't only come with education. It doesn't only come with a great course which will help you become a trader. It also comes with a challenge account. Now, the challenge account is a $10,000 account in which you can trade and try to gain real cash price. Now, you're gonna get a $10,000 account. It is a live account. It's not a real account, it's a demo account, but it does not look like a regular demo practice account. It's a real-time live account in which if you will lose $500, you're out of the game. But in case you're gonna make $3,000 in profits in 30 days, you will get a cash price of $2,000. Now that's an amazing price for doing exactly what you will learn to do in the course that you will join. And all of this is just $199. It's just $199. Now we priced this course recently at $500. Right now I can offer it to you at $199. And not only that it costs just $199, and this price will go away soon. We're not gonna leave it at this price. I mean, right now, that's the price, $199. So hurry up and click that button here and join this amazing course and a practice account. But please remember, this is a one-time offer that will be there for a short time only. So join us now for $199 course, which comes with a practice account. Start practicing today. Go through the course, understand the rules, learn a little bit more about trading, and then start the real life account, again, a demo account, but you do have the chance to gain up to $2,000 price if you follow the rules and if you trade correctly, exactly like I'm going to explain to you through the course that you will uh, learn. Now, if you have any questions, if something is not clear, anyway, click on that link right here and just contact my, my, my team and ask any question you may like. Um, you, you will be answered and just make sure that you understand everything before you sign up. It is just $199, but you know, take your time, try to understand if this is the thing that you want to do. Do you want to become a trader? Do you want to learn more about trading? Please remember that uh, most traders lose money and this is mainly because they do not get the right education. So I want to thank you again for watching this video. Uh, it was amazing having you here and I hope you enjoyed and I hope it was educational and worthwhile for you and I really appreciate the fact that uh, you watched this video all the way down here to the end and uh, that's really amazing. So thank you again for watching and take this one time offer over here, just $1.99 with a practice account and all the education needed to become a trader. And again, thank you very much. If you have any question, click on the link here 
and ask my team any question you may like. There's also a Q&A there which you can go through. So everything will be explained. If you just click on the link here, you will get all the answers you need or contact my team and they will explain some more. So again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the course.